What's going on and welcome back to the channel. Today in this DaVinci Resolve tutorial, we are talking about some of my favorite tips and tricks that will save you time and make you a better editor. Without further ado, let's dive into the first effect that I love using and that is dolly zoom. To achieve this zoom parallax effect, we're first gonna need a shot that is giving us some kind of push, some kind of zoom action. Uh, this one is pulling out, that's fine. It can either be a push in or a pull out shot. Uh, and then we are going to be doing the opposite in post. So the best way to do it is to find the shot we like. I'm just going to trim this up because it's a little long. Get it to a good point right there. It's pretty good. We'll just trim that up right there. And then we can do a couple different things. We can either turn on dynamic zoom or we can do it uh, manually. I prefer to do it manually. That's just my preference. But if we want to do dynamic zoom, if we turn it on and we hit play, we can see it's doing something, but it's going the same direction. So we need to hit swap and then we're gonna play that through. And now we can see the background is actually going the opposite direction because the camera is pulling out while we're digitally zooming in. Again, if we didn't like the speed of that or we wanted to have a little bit more control, we could do manually under the transform in the inspector tab. We would zoom that in to start there, add a keyframe, go to the end right here, and zoom out. Now I highly recommend having either a 1080 clip or a 4K clip in a 1080 timeline or so on and so forth. I would downgrade. I would have your timeline be higher resolution than the video clip so we're not punching in on a 4K clip or punching in on a 1080 video clip in a 1080 timeline or 4K timeline. Hope that made sense. And you can see it's giving us the exact same effect that it did on the other because I did the opposite. Uh, we need this to actually start wide and we need our next one to be the one that is zoomed in. Uh, I could also do position if I wanted to. We'll add a position key on both of them, but on the second one, I am going to bring it up a little bit. And that this is kind of why I just prefer having more manual control, but that is how you do this parallax zoom effect. Now let's move on to the second effect, which is one of my favorites and it is scene detect. Now this is kind of a tip slash helping out slash effect. So if we grab a video clip that we have uh, that has already been done, if I skim through it, you can see all these shots from a video that I had shot a while ago. I do not have the project anymore. I don't have any of the raw footage saved. And let's say I wanted to go through and recolor this, uh, maybe some of the clips. I don't wanna to have to manually go through and actually cut this uh, according to the shot that's insanely time consuming. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go right up here to the top under timeline. We are gonna go right down here to detect scene cuts. We're gonna hit that. It's gonna run its magic depending on how long the video is and how fast your computer is. That's gonna determine how fast this is going to do its job. We can see it is already done with mine. And if we zoom in here, you can see every one of these has been detected and cut as individual clips, saving me an insane amount of time than going through there and doing that manually. Now, before we move on to any more tips, let's talk about the sponsor of today's video, and that is Artlist. If you've been around the channel for a while, you know I love Artlist. They have just recently dropped the bomb on all of us that's giving us AI voiceover that actually take a breath in between saying a word at times. It's honestly a little scary. All I do is go to the AI voiceover. I find the voiceover that I'm liking. I select that. I type in whatever I'm wanting to put, hit generate. Artlist is hands down the best place to help you crush that next video. I mean, come on, that is insanely good. And again, there is multiple options you can pick from in the voiceover. If you really wanna go above and beyond, you can actually change the voice settings up in the top. You got emotional range, similarity to the original voice, style boost it really is an amazing add-on that I did not realize how much I needed saving me so much more time when I'm pumping out videos if you guys are wanting to check out Artlist, I will have a link in the description below use that link when you sign up and you get two extra free months on a yearly subscription thank you so much Artlist, for sponsoring this video please do not send AI bots to come get me 
We've all been there where we've edited an amazing video, we hit play, and then the audio is sometimes a little weird, like you're hearing the pops and the, the, you know, the hissing when you go in between cuts. I have definitely been guilty where I'm going to be fading the clip in and out by just grabbing the ends, fading it in. Maybe sometimes I grab it down here and I'm just gonna extend it a little bit, that way there's no pop. Even grabbing the pre-made transitions that fade from one to the other, there's a faster way than that. So inside the Fairlight page, we go to the very top Fairlight tab. We are gonna go right down here to Batch Fade Settings. We're gonna click that. And in here, we can do Fade In, Crossfade, Fade Out, as well as we can kind of change the curve and the length that we want them to be. So if you have a massive video, this could save you hours on that project. For the last effect, this is something I use all the time, and that is object removal. So I have a clip I'm just gonna use from a previous tutorial here. Let's say I don't want this picture in this shot. So I am going to go to the color tab, and in here, I am going to click on the mask window, and I'm just gonna kind of draw around it. Nothing amazingly great but just a general idea, something like that. I'm gonna hit Option S on a Mac. It is gonna bring up a second node. I am going to link that to the second node, and then I am going to go to the effects, and I am going to look for object removal. We are gonna drag and drop that on there. I am going to do scene analysis. It's gonna see what it wants to do. It's gonna pull that out. You can see, it worked, but it looks really bad because now it's more obvious than the other. And what I'm gonna do is right here on the bottom, I'm gonna hit build clean slate. It's gonna do its job, boom, it has taken it out. Now you do have to be careful if this is going in front of the subject because obviously it's going to show that way, as well as you can track this to make this be in a moving shot to get rid of multiple things, microphones, light stands, whatever you're going to do. This really has a lot of options for you. That's it for me today. If you want to see more tips and tricks videos on DaVinci Resolve, please let me know in the comments below. You're amazing, I'm the Iron Giant. See you next time. Peace.